Hello, hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. So, welcome back to our Achievers Academy. Today, we will be going to discuss about a topic that is nothing but presidential elections. So, Achievers Academy from now, we are going to launch a kind of series of videos that are related to the current affairs and which are more in use. So, stay tuned for getting more number of videos in the same Academy. manner. So, today we are going to discuss about a topic that is nothing but presidential election. So, this presidential election is most in use. If I ask you the question, who is the present president of India? Ramnath Kovindji, he is the present president of India. So, then what the important things related to the Ramnath Kovindji means? He is considered as second Dalit president of India. So, he became president in the year 2017. So, the opposition candidate or else the other candidate who are contesting against the Ramnath Kovindji is nothing but speaker. So, previously who is a speaker that is nothing but Meera Kumar. Okay. So, then if you look at the thing, who will be the next president of India? So, it is a kind of a question mark. Even still the presidential candidates were also not announced. But there is a lot of speculation in news that Hanna Hazare will be from one side of the presidential election. But we have to wait and see who will be the next president of India. But before going to the topic, so I am just reminding you, today we are going to discuss about presidential topic. Most of you might had knowledge regarding who will be participating in the elections to the president. But in this video, in a different manner, we are going to discuss the things related to the president other than who are going to uh, participate in the elections to the president. So, if we look at the aspects, that is nothing but, so article 52 will discuss about president of India. So, which article will deal with president of India is nothing but article 52 will deal with the presidential, so with the president. So, today in this video, we will be discussing about electoral college what is the meaning of electoral college, what is the value of votes, that is for MP there will be one value and also for MLA there will be one value and how come election disputes will be challenged in the Supreme Court or any other provisions related to the electoral disputes. Okay? So, in the first instance, if we look at the thing, so what will be or else who will be present in the electoral college? So, who will be present in the electoral college? So, if we discuss this electoral college means the meaning of this electoral college is the people who will be casting their votes for the presidential election. So, the group of people will be calling this term electoral college. Even though the word seems to be difficult but it is having a simple meaning. The people who are participating in the uh, elections who are going to cast their votes in the presidential elections that group of people is called as electoral college. Usually, the elections regarding to the president is discussed in the article 54 and the procedure is discussed in the article 55 of the Indian constitution. So, if we go through the electoral college, in the first instance, all the, all the elected members of the parliament, all the elected members of the parliament will be participating in the elections to the president, all the elected members of parliament. So, definitely most of the students will be having a doubt or question regarding this point. So, most see all the elected members means we will be having Lok Sabha and we do have Rajya Sabha when we discuss about the parliament. So, in Lok Sabha how many elected members are present? So, the question is, so here the point we are discussing is all the elected members. So, in the Lok Sabha, there are 543 members who were elected. We are not discussing whether they are directly elected or indirectly elected. It is just saying that all the elected members of the parliament will be participating in the elections to the president. And in case of Rajya Sabha, similarly if you look at the Rajya Sabha, so here we will be discussing that. So, out of what is the present strength of the Rajya Sabha? 245. In that, the elected strength is nothing but 233. So, 543 members and 233 members from the parliament will be going to participate in the elections to the president. So, how many members from the parliament will be going to participate or will be casting their votes in the elections to the president is nothing but 776. In the 
next instance who will be participating other than elected members of the parliament that is nothing but all the all the elected members all the elected members of assemblies of the state all the elected members of assemblies of the state so then see why am i stressing particularly elected why because in the parliament there are also nominated candidates previously in lok sabha there used to be two anglo indians but this anglo indian nomination has been stopped so whatever it may be this nominated members will never participate in the elections to the president similarly in case of rajya sabha also there is a tradition of nominating 12 members from the four categories this 12 members will also not participate in the elections to the president so and the next thing is that all the elected members of the assemblies so here my point or is the point which i am going to stress is nothing but usually in the state there are assemblies there are also councils so similar to the parliament there is also assembly there is also council even in council also there are members who were elected so in the assembly you can see elected candidates in the council also you can able to see the elected candidates but the thing is that here only elected members of assemblies of state elected members of assemblies of state only these people will participate in the elections to the president so this is the thing so up to up to 1995 this used to be the tradition this used to be the tradition so before 1995 if i ask you the question who will be the part of electoral college of the president that is all the elected members of the parliament and all the elected members of the assemblies no nominated members will participate so then the question arises sir there are also the union territories which are having the assemblies there are also uts which are having the assemblies so in the year 1992 through 70th constitutional amendment act a new change got added in the indian constitution okay in the year 1992 through 70th constitution a new change got added what is that so other than the elected members of parliament and assemblies so the third point is all the elected members of assemblies assemblies of union territories will also participate in the elections to the president so here the question is the members of union territories of puducherry will be started participating in the elections to the president okay so because previously only those are the two union territories which are having the assemblies right now if the question is asked yes jammu kashmir do also have assemblies but still that haven't constituted so far so right now if the elections will be conducted to the president so this apart from this one and two the third point that is elected members of assemblies of union territories delhi and puducherry will also participate so never nominated members will be participating elections to the president so this is the meaning that is these is the these are the people who will be presenting in the electoral college and no nominated member will participate in the elections to the president so the next instance is what is the procedure for conducting elections to the president that is nothing but proportional representation so most of you have a knowledge regarding proportional representation so guys in a separate video i'll explain you what exactly is the meaning of proportional representation and what is the advantage associated with the you know this proportional representation by single transferable vote this proportional representation by single transferable vote this procedure will be used for conducting elections to the president this will also be used for conducting elections to the vice president rajya sabha members and also council members so this is the procedure so article 55 will say that the elections to the procedure will be held by the uh, president will be held by a procedure known as proportional representation by single transferable vote and the next question arises is what is the value what is the value of vote what is the value of vote of mla this question was also previously asked in the upsc so basically students will definitely neglect these aspects while they are going through a particular book or while going through the concepts 
So here, it is very important for each and every candidate to focus on what is the value of vote of an MLA. So that is, so in order to get this value, that is total population of the state. Total population of the state. So total population of the state by total, total elected MLAs. Total elected MLAs in a respective state. Total elected MLAs in a respective state into 1 by 1000. This formula has been asked in the examination. So what is the value of one MLA vote? So that is total population by total elected MLAs into 1 by 1000. See, in a separate video, I will also explain you with an example by taking into consideration the population of a particular state and also the total elected MLS and what is the value we will be getting to that particular state. Okay, I will make a separate video regarding that. And the next thing is that, next question arises is value, value of an MP. So, what is the value of an MP? So, that equal to, in order to get this, we need to get this point. For suppose, if you know the value of one MLA in a state, so if you know the value of one MLA in a state, obviously we do know the value of all the MLAs in a state. So when you know the value of one MLA, you also know the value of all the MLAs in a state, isn't it? Similarly, when you know the value of all the MLAs in a state, you do also know the value of all the MLAs in country, okay. So you will also know all the value of MLAs in the entire country. So whatever the value you get. So here, in order to get the value of an MP, the first instance is value of, value of all MLAs, value of all MLAs in country, value of all MLAs in country by, by, total by total elected MPs by total elected MPs in the parliament that will be 776 as I told you. So then we will get value of an MP. So with this formula we get value of an MLA, value of all the MLAs in a state, value of all the MLAs in the country then after we also know the value of all the MLS of the country by total elected MPs. We can come to a conclusion regarding what is the value of an MP. So now my point is the value of each and every MP is same in the country. Similarly, the value of each and every MLA is the same in a state. But the value of each MLA is not same in the entire country. Okay, first thing. The value of each MP is the same. The value of each MLA in a state is the same. But the value of MLAs in the entire country is not same. Andhra Pradesh MLA vote value might not be equal to Telangana state MLA vote value. And this is in turn not equal to value of an MLA vote in Maharashtra. So these are the three points you need to keep in point. You know, you need to keep in mind. The same question was asked in the UPSC. So, so far two steps were completed. Electoral college and also value of MP and MLA and procedure proportional representation. We'll discuss in a separate video what is proportional representation with an example to calculate the vote of a, you know, uh, MP and also vote of an MLA in case of a presidential elections. So, next thing. So, election disputes. So what about election disputes? Other than this one, other than this election disputes, we also need to discuss, so that is, for suppose, all the elected MPs. Yes, these people will participate in the election, but what is the platform? What is the platform where these elections will be conducted? Okay, what is the platform where these elections will be conducted? So, all the MPs will be gathering at a parliament house. So, the parliament house is the platform where this parliament members will be casting their votes. Next, what about the platform for the state assembly members? That is secretariat. Okay. So, the secretariat will be the place where all the members of the assemblies will be casting their vote. And the same in case of a union territories. And the next thing is that presidential candidates. So, presidential candidates 
before participating in the elections, they have to submit their nomination letters. They have to submit their nomination letters. So to whom these presidential candidates will submit their nomination letters? That is nothing but to the returning officer. So who will be the returning officer in case of a presidential election? So that is the question mark. So in case of returning officer, so generally there will be Lok Sabha Secretary General. Okay, so Lok Sabha Secretary General, one time this Lok Sabha Secretary General will be acting as a returning officer in the other instance, in an alternative manner. Second time, Rajya Sabha Secretary General will be acting as a returning officer and the next will be Lok Sabha and the next will be Rajya Sabha. Cycle repeats. For suppose in the year 2017, presidential elections, who is the now, returning officer, that is nothing but Lok Sabha Secretary General is the returning officer, Anup Sharma. So then the question is, who will be the returning officer for the 2022 presidential elections? That is Rajya Sabha Secretary General. My question to you is, second question, the first question is, as I told you, the first Dalit president, who is the first Dalit president? Second Dalit president is the Ramnath Kovind. So, second question is, who is the Secretary General of Rajya Sabha? So, these are the persons to whom President will submit his nomination letter. Next, after this, so basically, Article 71 says that presidential election disputes, presidential election disputes can be challenged only in the Supreme Court. Other than this Supreme Court, you cannot challenge anything in the Supreme Court. Okay, Presidential elections can be challenged only in the Supreme Court. And if you want to challenge the presidential elections in the Supreme Court, you need a support of 20 members who are part of an electoral college. So, without having the support of 20 members who are part of an electoral college, you cannot challenge that in the Supreme Court. Next thing. So, if you want to, while the presidential election is in progress, okay, while the presidential election is in the progress, you cannot challenge that in the Supreme Court. Only after the election, only after the elections, that is only after the presidential election only, you can challenge that. So, but within 30 days, you have to challenge the dispute. If you have any dispute related to the president, you can challenge that. But after the completion of elections, within the 30 days after the completion of the elections, you can challenge that in the Supreme Court. Okay, next. There are also cases related to the presidential elections. In the year 1957, that is Dr. Kare, Dr. Kare versus Union of India. So here what happened means in the Dr. Kare case, what happened is, presidential election can be challenged. For suppose, if there is any vacancy in the electoral college, if there is any vacancy in the electoral college, regarding that case, you can challenge in the Supreme Court. But you can only challenge after the election. You can challenge only after the completion of the election. If you want to challenge a case in the Supreme Court related to vacancy in the electoral college of the president, yes, you can challenge but only after the election and also who can challenge that is contesting candidates only contesting candidates can challenge that apart from this apart from contesting candidates who can you know who can challenge that in the supreme court that is members of electoral college members of electoral college either contesting candidate can challenge the case in the Supreme Court or electoral college members only can uh, challenge that in the Supreme Court. So this is the new point which most of you might have learnt and apart from this. So then the parliament in the year 1961 came up with a new constitutional amendment act that is 11th constitutional amendment act. 11th constitutional amendment act. So what it has stated is that if anyone want to challenge regarding the uh, any electoral procedure, they can challenge. But nobody can challenge in the Supreme Court regarding vacancies. Regarding vacancies. Regarding vacancies in electoral college. So if there is any vacancies in electoral college, no one can approach the Supreme Court. This law was made in the year 1961 through 11th Constitutional Amendment Act. Okay, So, 1957 Supreme Court held that if there is any vacancies 
regarding that you can challenge but after the completion of the election process only contesting candidates and also only electoral college members but again parliament have made a separate constitutional amendment act saying that nobody can challenge in the supreme court if the case is related to vacancies in the electoral college other things you can challenge but regarding vacancies you cannot challenge so again in the year 1978 44th constitutional amendment act 44th constitutional amendment act it has stated that that is nobody can challenge the case of the president in the supreme court other than electoral college other than electoral college means electoral college members only can challenge that in the supreme court and also contesting candidate and also contesting candidate only these two persons or these two group of people can challenge the case in the supreme court and the same amendment act have also stated that even suspended members even suspended members can also contest can also cast their votes can also cast their votes in the presidential elections so these are the changes and the other thing is that basically there is something called as anti-defection law where the members are allowed to obey to the directions given by the party but in case of presidential elections no political party are allowed to issue the whip no political party are allowed to issue the whip regarding the presidential elections and it is not compulsory for the candidates to obey to the directions given by the political party first thing they can cast their votes or they cannot stay away from casting their votes that is they cannot participate also it is their wish and also to whomsoever they want to cast their votes they can cast their votes they can have complete freedom to whomsoever they want to cast their votes so these are the things which we have discussed regarding the election to the president okay so we have discussed about electoral college we have discussed about formula for calculating the value of votes we have also discussed regarding election disputes that is platform where the parliament members will casting their votes platform where assembly members will be casting their votes we discussed about 78th constitutional we discussed about 11th constitutional we discussed about 44th constitutional amendment acts related to the president so if you like this video if you still expect me to do the video related to the proportional representation by single transferable vote and a video explaining the example by uh, to calculate the value of an MLA and also to calculate the value of an MP. I'll make it in a separate video, but just to keep it in a comment section. What are you expecting? So what kind of video you want me to do? So that's all for this video. And thank you for, thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video.